It is party time, Mom. Welcome to a Thursday off the rails episode of the Chad Prather Show. We are in the mothership, which is, of course, Studio 22. The Puppet Master Mark is at the helm. Super Mario Chris Cruz driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. And speaking of nether regions, Sarah Gonzalez. Oh. Sarah Gonzalez. Quite, uh -huh. a, quite an intro. Uh -huh. Hello. We've had some great Bro. guests this week. We've had Ariel Scarcella. Mm hmm. You had her on your show. I did. I love her. Yeah, she's great. She's fantastic. She's good the people. world needs more Ariel Scarcellas. Listen, all I have to say though is you get Ariel and Elijah on the same show and you're running into some FCC problems. I know. I don't want to talk about Elijah. I talked about him too much last night okay. uh, with our buddy Jorge Ventura, who was also on your show. show yes. Jorge yeah. with Daily Caller. Yeah. He was on last night's show. If you missed it, go back and watch it. He's got a great new documentary out. Amazing. Cartelsdoc.com. You can find it. Cartelsdoc.com. DOC.com. You can go over there, check it out. Cartel it's Doc. Cartel Doc. Yeah. Cartel's Doc. Doing God's work, really. He is. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, if you really want to be informed on border security, mm -hmm. this is kind of stuff you need to absorb. Mm -hmm. You know, I look, I get the videos all the time of the cartels disemboweling somebody or cutting a head off with a hunting knife and stuff. Like, I, I get the gore. I know yeah. the violence is there. But you need to educate yourself on some stuff. Like, I've been going back, and I was telling Jorge that I, I've been going back and I've been reading studies and reports that go back talking about why would you like how does the economy make money by having an open border so i just randomly the other day i was like you know what i'm just gonna duck duck go this mm -hmm. and i started asking the question i said how would an, how would the country make money with an open border there's tons of articles out there really that talk about how an open border incentivizes uh, the economy or the economy you know uh and and how the estimate is a hundred trillion dollars boosted into the economy if we had an open border that's what studies have shown oh uh, and so basically it, it brings an influx of workers. Mm -hmm. Those people would be paying taxes. High value uh, workers, yeah, I'm sure, yes. You know, Milton Friedman, you know, the, the late economist Milton Friedman said that you can't have a welfare state and an open border. Right. They're going to violate one. each other. you got to pick one. Yeah. Uh, so if you're going to have something where people actually need government dependence, you can't have an open border because that's going to flood that. So now basically they're going back and they're, they're saying, no, he was wrong because mm. uh, in light of – you have to determine who's a high value worker, who's a low value worker. But see, that's hard to do because let's say you're an engineer and, and they're going to like, well, we're going to tax you more because you're a high value worker. And you right. say, oh, no, no, I just clean the stuff around here. I just clean the pipes. Right. Well, yeah. you were an engineer, but you just start defining yourself as it. So it gets, it gets kind of sticky. Do, the, do your own research, but it all ties into the economics of an open border. I feel like eventually when you if you have an open border eventually people are going to want to stop coming because you're going to turn your country into such a shithole. Yeah, so, I mean, I've read enough at this point in time where, because it's easy to play the, the whole, the, the yeah. little bullet points yeah, that we yeah, all hear, yeah, right? Yeah. But I've, I've been going while, in trying to, like, I could play good devil's advocate at this point for an open border, like an argument for an open border. Yeah. Uh, still nothing's persuaded me that that's a good idea. You know, the no, old idea was back when, back, like back in 2018, back when Trump was in office, a lot of the articles were talking about uh, how if you opened up the border, it would be better because people aren't going to stay. Like if they know they can come across and just come back and forth, they're going to go back to where their family is, where their church is, where their, you know, their home is, those kind of things. <laughs> they're not going to stay. Well, we've proven that wrong. Yeah. That's yeah. not been proven wrong. Yeah. That, yeah. They, they're not. Because once you get into the interior if, of the country, they're like, no, nah, we're here. Yeah. If they set up shop here, they're not yeah. just going to leave and never come back. <laughs> yeah. You can call your abuelo. <laughs> right. They're, they're good. <laughs> they're set. Uh, but um, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intriguing little study. See, people think I don't know things. It's amazing. I, I, like, and I don't know a lot of things, but yeah, by God, I know how to look them up. Yeah. I know how to look things up. And when I get into something, I, I really study it because yeah. I, I try to see it from the other side. I really do. But you should. Don't let the cowboy hat fool you. Yeah. That's, got, how, that's how you become educated on I got, matters. I got, I got marbles. I, you know, I, my, you just, my philosophy is go, go talk to some scholars or read some scholars. And, and see what they had to say on the thing. You might not agree with all of it, but, right. but at least see what the data. Oh, and by the way, um, um, analytical data is now racist. I don't know if you saw that the other day. Oh, they came out with a study. Uh, I saw that and I, wanted, and I commented on it. I said, but which, which analytical data did you use to come up with <laughs> this, up with this. Uh, with this <laughs> thing that said the it was statistic. racist? Yeah. Wow. So there you go. If everything is racist, then nothing is racist. It's well, just the thing.
I don't know. I like being a victim myself. Do you? Yeah, I like I like money too. Let's sell something. Uh, <laughs> since 1993, Taser products have been saving literally hundreds of thousands of lives. You know, I'm a big fan of the Second Amendment. Uh, it's good to know that you can have a little extra protection for your family. You know, like people like to do it like either or, like you need a gun or a Taser. Now, just do both. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, take Taser Pulse Plus. It can shoot up to 15 feet away. Uh, can lock up an attacker's muscles for up to 30 seconds, giving you and your family time to get away. Uh, it's paired with your phone, actually, which alerts emergency dispatchers with your GPS location as soon as you fire it. It only weighs eight ounces. Pretty convenient for you to carry just about anywhere. Uh, put it on your hip, put it in your bag, glove box. Uh, carry that sucker. Taser Pulse Plus anywhere you want. Uh, Self-defense doesn't always have to be like kill or be killed with that kind of outcome. Taser Pulse Plus, you can get it today and save 15% at Taser, T-A-S-E-R.com with promo code C-H-A-D. I spell it Chad. That's Taser.com, promo code Chad. Go to Taser.com, promo code Chad. Supplies are limited and restrictions apply. See site for details. We'll be right back. Oh, Democrats, don't they just kill you? Ah, oh, man. From, so, so, you know, like Gavin Newsom <sighs> apparently has, like, Guillaume Barre probably from vaccine, being vaccine injured. I mean, that was the rumor. That's the rumor. Yeah. He, the, the dude vanished. He did. He was, he was just at an event yesterday. Did he or pop day, out? Day before yesterday, Did I he think. talk? He did, but there was still some speculation like he's not moving his left side. He's like, somebody say something. He's like, I don't know if I got left on you. He wasn't a puppet? I mean, it no. It wasn't a lookalike? No. It was Gavin? It, it was pompous Gavin Newsom, yeah. Speaking of that, so he didn't get vaccine injured. I, Damn it! I, well, listen. I, I don't love, wish I love ill on anyone. I, I actually would love it. I think it would be great karma I for someone think, who's mandating that for my would, children. I think it would. Now, no, don't get me wrong. I think it would be great if, if some people, if it backfired on them. Because you, you've been a douchebag. Like, you're willing to hurt our children. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're the many, ones who are saying you can't participate in society unless you get this because it's so safe and effective. It would just be such karmic justice. You were called a bioterrorist last week. I yes. saw that happen yes. on a panel discussion. Yeah, did you, you want to... You lit that ass up. Go up there and do some... Yeah, people are stupid. Mean I mean, that like that's kind of like tossing the racism thing around. Right. It's like, okay, well, you, you don't want to get vaccinated. You're a bioterrorist. Listen, dickhead, you're sitting up there with no mask, no mask on. Right, no I mean, mask. so you don't believe what it's like these climate people who right. want to say, ah, but you drove here in a freaking car. Yeah. And well, and also, uh, it's like, well, your own CDC director has already said that being vaccinated doesn't stop you from transmitting it. So I right. guess you're the bioterrorist hazard right. too. Who was that? What was that concert where the people got killed? The Travis Scott thing? Yeah. I'm all oh, over God. the map, but this is yeah. just why it's hitting me. It's this Thursday, we could do this. Who the hell is Travis Scott? He okay, so he is Kylie Jenner's baby daddy, boyfriend. So he is Ooh. a rapper. And I, I, I honestly I had no idea he was this big. I don't know if it happened because he's dating Kylie or if it happened before. Kylie's that. kinda hot, right? She is since she got her work done, yeah. Okay. Well they've all had work done. I like I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think naturally. I started no, thinking they're yes. a Kardashian, but she's not a Kardashian, she's a Jenner. Yeah, I mean they're Kardashian sisters. Jenner, yeah. Well, I don't really know who these people are. But yeah, no, he is. I, I had no idea he had the 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 fandom that he had. Like Khloe Kardashian. She's my girl. Like, she's the tall one, right? Yes. She's the one who's had a lot of work done. Like she looks like a whole other human. She does. She does. Which brings me back to Gavin Newsom. <laughs> Do you remember what um, Kimberly Kim Guilfoyle looked like when she was married to him? I just saw it the other day, and it 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 it's, blows my mind every time. I'm gonna get some work done. Yeah. But not that much. Well, yeah, you. I mean, I think that that's probably how it starts. Yeah, you get addicted to it. Yeah, I get like, like tattoos. Tattoo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, but no, this this Travis Scott. That is named Travis Scott. Yeah, yeah. You think that was like a satanic ritual sacrifice thing? Some weird I, shit I'm seeing on Telegram. It is really weird. I don't. I maybe you've gone down the rabbit hole. I've more gone down than the rabbit hole a little bit. I don't want to sit there and watch videos of people dying. Like I, I see that stuff every it. day because people send it to me all the time. I wouldn't discount it. I'll, I'll say that. I don't know enough to make an informed opinion about that, but I wouldn't discount like, that idea. Here's my thing. When I hear, like so much comes at me, 
I can only process so many things. Yeah. So when I see that eight people died at a concert by getting trampled, I think, okay, eight people got trampled to death at a, in an overcrowded concert. Mm -hmm. Happens at soccer games, all these kinds of deals. Like it would never cross my mind that like eight flames blew up out of the stage at the time when eight people died. Uh, Is that really what happened? Yeah, apparently so. Like, I don't know who sits around going, you know what? Let's study all this. That's wild. Yeah. So, I mean, and then, and then you've got people convulsing on the ground having right. a, a heart attack. Like, how do eight people have a heart attack all at once? And they're not being trampled. They're laying on the ground convulsing while other people are dancing around them. I mean, it's kind of creepy. Well, and then I, I mean, I did see the clip of the people going up to the cameraman trying to say, you, you guys have to stop the show. You have to stop the show. There's people dead down there. And, like, nobody did Ooh. anything. You know, I will say, though, I don't I'm not here to defend Travis Scott, but I have been in a position where, you know, you're on stage and lights are shining in your face. You, you don't can't know. always see what's no, going listen, on in front of you. It's, I was I mean, just for instance, last Friday night, I met I met the Buddy Holly mm -hmm. in Lubbock, a big place. It seats like twenty three hundred people. Beautiful cathedral type place. Yeah. And those lights are on. Yeah, you can't. You see cannot shit. see the audience. No. I mean, you're 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 basically performing to a black room. Right. Are you going to come do my Christmas special Christmas show in, in Arlington? I'm there. You're, you're going to come do an Absolutely. appearance, so you oh. can come sing. Oh. It's Chad yeah, Prather and it. Friends. Absolutely, let's do it. Chad Prather and Friends Christmas special. Yeah, Arlington we got to pick our song. December 17th. I feel like it should be Baby It's Cold Outside, but that's fine. Yeah. We'll figure it out. You know whose mind was blown at your singing? Who? Sydney Watson. Oh. <laughs> she was like, did you know that she could sing? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, like, really sing? I That's like, yeah. funny. Yeah, that was a uh, one too many vodka shots on Halloween. Bam! You were looking like a smoke show too, Thanks. like a snack. Thanks. Camouflage snack. I've worked very hard to get my look at you post my pre baby body. Back. I need you to gain some weight. I like fat Sarah. Really? Um, no. The uh, <laughs> so speaking of no governors, one likes fat speaking Sarah. of governors, the chick in New York. Oh, Kathy Hochul, Kathy Hochul yeah. or how you say Hochul, her name? I think. She wants young kids vaccinated. She offers a chance at a full scholarship college for vaccination. Speaking of uh, rituals and sacrifices, <laughs> satanic rituals. Yeah. Why do you have to incentivize this thing? So you know, bad. that's what I keep asking, Chad. It's like if we are truly in this really horrible, scary pandemic and we see all of these people dropping dead around us, you're not going to have to convince me to go get my child some sort of a, 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 a solution. I'll just yeah. freaking do it. Like there, there is no reason. It's just like Obamacare. It's like, why do you have to? Why did you guys have to mandate that everyone get it? If it's so awesome. It's so good. Everyone will just get it. There's no reason to mandate it. Like out here in the hallway, there's a couch. There's a sectional couch. It's a Ralph Lauren couch. Uh huh. No. <laughs> and okay. I'm not getting over it. And it belongs to a guy named Glenn Beck. Of course. And I've heard of him. I, I hear Everything he's, here I hear belongs he's up to and coming. a guy named Glenn Beck. And I told Tim, yeah. Glenn's son in law. Mm hmm. I said, uh, I want that couch. And he goes, it's Glenn's. I said, well, tell him I'll buy it from him. Yeah. He's got stuff. And so I said, tell him, Tim. I'm serious. I really want this couch. And like, I wanted it. Yeah. Like, I need this couch. Yeah. Moving yeah. into a new place, I yeah. want this you couch. Need, it you fits need perfectly. Yeah. I don't need furniture, but this couch would fit perfectly. Right. So anyway, I'm walking here a little while ago before we start this taping, and I see Glenn out there, and I walk up to him, and Glenn looking tired as Glenn does. <laughs> I said, Glenn. Sell me this couch. He goes, I have plans for that couch. <laughs> what like, could his plans be? I said, Glenn, you're a hoarder. <laughs> it's like, you have so much stuff. You're a hoarder. Yeah. Well, I have plans. And that was your first mistake approaching him for the his, couch. His yeah. Well, he has plans. His plans are to not let Chad Prather exactly. have the couch. Exactly. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, those are plans. So my point is, if you want something, you go get it. Yeah. That's the right, deal. Like, right. I went to Glenn. I went to the man. Yeah. I was like, I want this couch bad enough. I'm going to pass his son-in-law. Right. I'm cutting out the middleman. I'm going to go to the man himself, and I'm going to go get it. Like, if I really felt like that vaccine was, mm -hmm. was or the blah, blah, was, was beneficial to mm -hmm. me and my kids and all this. Like, you don't have to offer me college scholarships. I would not be walking. I would be running. I would go, go get, get it. it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need a puppet to tell me. Right. I don't need Big Bird and his ouchie. In fact, I, I wonder how many people 
uh, actually had plans to go get the blah, blah, and then saw all of these weird incentives like offering people joints and offering people a couple days ago. I did a show uh, with Elijah and Sydney about, uh, you know, offering sex in Austria. They were like, I saw that. yeah, they're offering sex at a brothel. If you get the if you get the blah, blah on site, it's like. I, like, I can't imagine that there are like not a good handful of people who are like, well, I was going to get it, but now this feels weird. Yeah, like like you're going to get a poke for a poke. Like if you're going to go out and have sex for it. <laughs> now, I, I think they were offering a sex class. Uh, like, no, you're having sex. sex. Yeah, you you're having have sex, sex with a, with a per, with so, whatever with a person. <laughs> whatever so, person is there at that day. HIV, COVID, which, wow. which I would like to one play this game with you guys. What? I would like to play this game. Oh, gosh. At what point do you get it? So, like, There's for no me, it will be no. maybe, like, three Bitcoins, and I'll no. get it. No, absolutely not. No. No No. No, no, there's, no there's no monetary there's value. Nothing. No, there isn't. There's, I mean, mm -hmm. literally, like, if you offered me a billion dollars. Okay. No, I, not wouldn't, I would not do not, it. I would not do it. Because, I, I mean, it's almost to me, like, like you're, and again, if you want to get it, you go get it. I'm talking about for me. Yeah. yeah for yeah, yeah. me. No. Me either. Like, I might put a dude's wiener in my mouth for a billion dollars, but I'm not doing that. Well, now we're talking. <laughs> Is that an offer? <laughs> I can justify it. I can justify Every that. Every guy's played that game. <laughs> How much would it take? <laughs> no, Everyone it, has no, a number. Just, you know, yeah, I'm, like Jesse Payton, my buddy says uh, on, a, on a comedy stage, he's like, I'd be on the 50 yard line of the NFL with my dad going, da 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 da. <laughs> Billion dollars. Anyway, <laughs> mom, my mom watches. Anyway, it's gross. <laughs> Woo! Uh, but no, there's no monetary no. value to that. Because no. for me, like, maybe you drop dead. Exactly. And again, so we he played the TikTok for me the other day of this person. And we saw, you sent the, the tweet to us yesterday on a group oh, yeah. text. Yeah. These people say, we're going to give it to your kids. Yeah. You can't fight us. You're, you're going to give it to your kids. <laughs> Girl, you don't understand something. Mm -hmm. You don't understand something. Mess around and find out. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse, fool. Mm -hmm. uh, the, <laughs> you don't, don't come at my kids. Nope. Period. Don't come at me. So, but they were saying all the things like, we're going to do it. Well, what if a kid doesn't even know their medical condition? Like maybe there's something the doctor and the parent have had a conversation. Like, okay, your child, child has XYZ syndrome. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, is, and it, was it going to affect them? No. They might have adverse effects if some kind of medication were introduced. Right, right. And so you're like, you don't even tell your kid, right? Well, that's like a, a lot of a lot of these drugs, I, I'll call them blah blahs in general. I'm not talking about this specific one, sure. but a lot of them have, uh, you know, if you have certain food allergies, you can't take them right. because they contain right. those ingredients that you would go into anaphylactic shock. So yeah. there's always the the risk that if you have some sort of medical condition, yeah. that that could happen, which is why that's a private, intimate decision between you and your medical professional. Now, I get it. Like, sometimes I sit around and I'll think, I'm like, you know, some people I know have had some real serious complications with COVID. Mm -hmm. it, it exacerbates the problem you already have. Like, so if you got you get pneumonia with it, like, right. that's bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, it can, really that can bad. happen with the flu as well. Yeah. And so I, I'm like, you know, it's a horrible thing. You can't breathe. You got a respiratory illness that's going on. But at the same time, it still statistically has a 99.7% right. recovery rate. And people lose sight of that fact. Yeah. Um, especially when you look at the, the waning, uh, you know, efficiency of all of these injections that they keep telling you to get. You got to get a booster. You got to get, I know, I think I just saw a tweet uh, the other day that said that the CDC was, I'm sorry, Pfizer was seeking authorization to offer the booster for all all adults yeah. not just the immune right so like it's it's the it's the slow it's the slow burn it's the creep into this because before they said no 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 no, no don't worry we're just offering it for immunocompromised now now several months later they're like mm -hmm. all right now we want it for everyone well what does that mean yeah i guess th the efficiency wanes pretty darn quickly yeah which means certain people may be better off just Toughing it out. I uh, and that reminds me, I got to tweet something out. Our friend Larry Alex Taunton wrote an article about this. Like now, you have these people um, in the faith community, you know, who are pushing for it. Like who? Was it? Like I, I was a, I've always been a huge admirer of of John Piper and his writings theologically. And you know, Piper, 
he came out against Trump, you know, basically saying, you know, he's an immoral person. And so, so that kind of like, eh, yeah. when you start theologically trying to get into politics in that regard, kind of bugs me. But then now he's come out and said it is your moral duty, basically, as a believer, Mm-mm. as a Christian, to go Mm-mm. get this. And I'm like, okay. So, I, uh, Larry, by now, you'll, I've already tweeted it out. I'm, I just reminded myself to tweet your article out. He wrote a whole great article. that's on my Twitter. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, like this whole thing, now they're moralizing. Mm-hmm. So, everything from incentivizing to moralizing, you know, like just when they put it in, what, 300 black churches you know, they're making those announcements. And, you know, yeah. that was in Texas churches, too, you know, using these black pastors to advocate for it as your moral duty. This is the kind of thing. So, no, when, when you're pushing it hard like that, no, I'm just like, I don't trust it. I don't think that it is an actual vaccine at this mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. And I've made my case about that many times. Uh, and for me, I, I, I'm, you know, reasonably solid. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to go to the brothel to have sex. <laughs> Um, I mean, what fat bastards are ha- that that get that can't get no can't get laid or going in That's there going you said. know what I just go ahead and go ahead and inoculate me like, so I can. What kind of degenerate needs that? Right. Uh, oh, man. Also, That's, if also that, if you uh, want that, if that, you want brothel sex, just pay for it. Yeah. Don't well, risk don't risk anything with the yeah, with the blah blah. Drop a couple hundred. And, yeah. And get on that like nasty a respectable ass. man. Yeah. Yeah. Go out there. Never mind. Um. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm glad Elijah's not here. Uh, Did you know that one out of three Americans regularly suffer from nausea? I was earlier today. Might be pregnant. Uh, We've all experienced Uh a horrible feeling, whether it's in the backseat of a car staring at your phone or maybe one too many after a night out. That was actually what was wrong with me. Uh, Even just the anxiety of a work day. Nausea can ruin your day, right? We don't like it. Force you to change your plans. And in some severe cases, makes you unable to function. If you, if you can relate, I got some good news. Relief Band. It is the number one FDA-cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness, anxiety, migraines, hangovers, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and a whole lot more. It's 100% drug-free, non-drowsy, provides all natural relief with zero side effects for as long as needed. How it works is this. It stimulates a nerve on your wrist. You wear it, and um, it travels to that part of your brain that controls nausea, blocks the signal your brain's sending to your stomach telling you that you're sick. So Relief Band, it just released its newest model, Relief Band Sport. The Sport is waterproof, features interchangeable bands, and has extended battery life. Uh, holiday season's coming up, folks, so there's never been a better opportunity to give the gift of relief. Make sure your loved ones are nausea-free. Right now, go to uh, Relief Band. Relief Band's got an exclusive offer just for our folks. you got to use uh, promo code WATCHCHAD when you go to ReliefBand.com, and you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and no questions asked. 30-day money-back guarantee. ReliefBand.com. Use promo code WATCHCHAD, 20% off, and free shipping. Be right back. Welcome back to the program. Ladies and gentlemen, today I bring before your eyes and ears the happy news that the full realization of communism's hopes and dreams is on display should you care to hop on an overpriced flight to California and have a look at it. Now, I'm going to give you a pro tip, a life hack, if you will, for enjoying this spectacle in full because you don't want to be distracted. You're going to want to put something inside that mandatory mask you're going to be wearing out in California. Uh, Maybe some raw cloves of garlic, a dash of smelling salts, hell, even one of your old gym socks will probably help because the smell where you're going is apt to curl your toes. You see, the current ship crisis that's affecting the entire nation is hitting California in a fun and interesting way. Homeless people are looting the grounded shipping containers. Duh. I can only imagine the narrative that the mainstream media is apt to spin out of this. I mean, you can picture the headline right now, uh, appropriately couched in the modern woke vernacular. Unhoused heroes use undocumented shopping carts to aid in shipping crisis by delivering goods themselves. Hey, the truth, of course, is that homeless people in coastal California have just hit the mother load and are in new and unusual ways obtaining goods that belong to someone else. Now, why tax the workers of the United States to death and then turn around and give that money to them through social programs when you could just cut the middleman out entirely? Now, of course, we're still going to tax you to death. That part's not going to change. Our economy's at a point so low right now that the limbo bar isn't even necessary, and the things like the shipping crisis are a huge part of that. And do I blame those homeless people for breaking into those shipping containers and taking stuff that doesn't belong to them? Do I? Do I? Hell yeah, I do. Uh, You thought I was about to go soft there for a minute. Listen, 
Of course they shouldn't be doing that. You know and I know the redistribution of wealth through government coercion and the redistribution of wealth through outright theft are just two sides of the same damn coin. It's just a little more raw when you see it on the ground rather than having it done gradually to you. Now, you know that I'm all about the notion that Texas should be leading the way for this country, but I, 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 I do like to recognize when other states help carry the torch. Now, Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida has begun offering incentive packages to shipping companies who unload cargo in his state. Why would he do that? Because he understands that the shipping element of our infrastructure is the lifeblood of the American economy, and he's worked hard to make sure that his state takes care of its own portion of that, whereas a lot of places are only just now starting to get their ports in working order after the craziness of the past 18 months. Florida's ports are, in the words of the governor, used to serving Florida farmers, families, and businesses with 24-hour operations. So listen, folks. Every time I think that the government of California has gone as far as it can to underline its legislative insanity with the same crayons it uses to color pretty pictures while it eats its corn dogs and french fries off the kids' menu every day, I am hit with the, another story like this one that reminds me of a simple fact. There's no level of stupidity they can't attain when they try hard enough. Make no mistake, California created its own problems with the homeless people, and it's perpetuating its own problems with the shipping and literally just about anything else you could think of. So folks, let's be more like Florida and really think through our problems instead of building back better. Let's build back some basic common damn sense. Is that really too much to ask? My God, can that big one just hit California <laughs> and take it? Like, it just needs to sweep the morons out into the Pacific Ocean. Not everybody. If it could just, if the tsunami could just pick the morons, and there's a lot of them there, that'd be great. Just pick the morons. <laughs> oh my God, they're looting, and they, they just why not just move into the shipping containers at this point? That's what the homeless people need to do. <sighs> Please don't. I really want my stuff. <laughs> you want your crap? I really want my oh, stuff. Oh my gosh, how's your business doing? Beauty by Sarah, funny. American Beauty by Sarah. It's funny you should ask. Um, we kind of had a, an issue. No, so all of our products are made in the United States, mm -hmm. right? Everything's made in America, which I am very proud of. And we worked very hard to make sure that that would be possible. But sometimes there are like raw materials that come from, you know, other Canada or other places that you use to, to put things together. And sure. so people don't realize even when you have a product that is made in America, you really can suffer from all of these supply chain uh, crises. And so we, it took forever for us to get uh, restocked. But uh, I believe as of, I think that we can, I think that I can say it. I don't know. I'm going to say it anyway, because it's it. my damn company. Um, we are starting a sale tomorrow, Friday, tomorrow, uh, that we're completely restocked. We've got some new products that are coming out. We're doing a pre-sale um, on the new, so we've got skincare. We're restocked on all our colors. We've got some new stuff coming out after that too. So we are like ready to go. Yeah. We had a slight pause because we just right when we started was when all of this supply chain stuff went crazy. And yeah. now we're rocking and rolling. We're rolling a global again. community. I mean, we really are. Yeah. Right? You know, and, and look, I people are like, made in America, made in America. Listen, okay, nothing you own. Right. It's is not 100%. completely. I mean, you think, yeah. oh, my shirt was made in America. Yeah, but was it? Yeah. Like, do you, do you really know where the rayon came from and the polyester and the cotton and, and the blend? And that's the problem. The ink that's in it, the yeah. tags that they make. I mean, the thread that was in the tag. And I mean, by the way, if if that was true, you'd be spending like eighty dollars per shirt, and yeah. nobody, no, like no business would stay in business yeah. with those prices. So like, I understand why within, they do it. Within but. my control, with our business, what I try to do is make sure. So I, so I don't care if it's a wristband, if it's a cup, if it's a um, uh, what well, the flags we get. Because people have told me they're like, you can't get flags, you can't get custom flags, got to be made in China. And I'm like, no, I can get them. I just pay extra. Right. I get them. We just pay extra. Yeah. Uh, there's people out there who do it, and we pay extra in order to do it if we but, want to bring the something to the market. But the extra, but, but the price point has to be reasonable because yeah, it oftentimes it's so unreasonable that no one else is going to yeah. pay that. Yeah. And, you know, we, we just, you know, like right now, we do our business because, well, we have, uh, we have a mission in why we do business. You have a mission in mm -hmm. why you do business. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, you're a capitalist. Of course, you want to make money from it, but you also, you want to give back. Like, you want to be mm -hmm. successful in order to give back. And to me, being successful financially is being successful in freedom. I think money actually helps you be free. Yes. -er. Yes. Um, in a lot of ways, you can come and go as you want. Uh, my buddy Sean Whalen with uh, Lions Not Sheep, uh, you know, he said, "Pay me an extra two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I go pick the damn cotton." 
Right. You know, I mean, it's what do you want to do? You want right. cheap stuff. But like this week, we're doing a special where like, I think if you use promo code Brandon on our site, we're not <laughs> only giving that. you a discount, but proceeds were donating to veterans organizations because, mm-hmm. of course, Veterans Day um, and the week of Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day, by the way. Thank you for those who have served. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, and so anyway, you know, there's you, there's it is a global community that's out there. And this the supply chain thing is, again, this is one more sign that I'm telling you, the globalists are trying to crash the plane. The yeah. whole thing, they're trying to crash the plane. One hundred percent. But, yeah. you know, a way that that everyone out there can make sure that that doesn't happen. They can go to AmericanBeautyBySarah.com. And there's no H in that. No H in that. And there is a Black Friday pre-sale going on. Yeah. And I'm just saying, stock up. Rock and roll. Don't let the globalists win. Don't let them win. You bastards. <laughs> you commie bastards. bastards. Oh, my <laughs> God. Um, it's a crazy world we're living in. It really is, man. And I, I, you know, I am thankful that we still live in the greatest country with the greatest ideas. The first time in the history of the world that an idea this fantastic has been this successful for this long. Um, and, and we're still there. I still hold out hope. Mm. Aw, that's cute. Getting tough, though. That's adorable. It's getting tough. I mean, when you read some of these stories yeah. that we do and, and so many things that are out there. It's not even just the stories. It's the people that we come across, mm-hmm. mostly on social media, so not in real life. I'm convinced none of these people would have the balls to say to me on so on in, in real life what they say to me on social media. But it's hard to, to uh. keep the hope when you experience these types of just inbred morons. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they, you know, they're armed with their talking points. And they just want to be. And, like, the t- and the talking points are so transparent and they yeah. have no and idea. I'm so sorry that life hasn't been good to you. It yeah. didn't come out the way you wanted it to come out. There's still time. But <laughs> what you got to do, though, is you got to come over to a, a point of, of right thinking. Mm-hmm. Maybe some self reflection. Like, at, at the end of the day, like if you're still sitting butt naked, cruising <laughs> the internet while on a folding chair in the basement of your mom's house, mm. uh, like you need to rethink your philosophy of life. There and were a lot of bad life choices that went a into lot that. Of bad life choices. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but what do I know? Uh, hey, friends, with the holidays right around the corner, do you have a plan in case things take a turn for the worst? Talking about getting some emergency food. As you know, tomorrow isn't promised to anyone, nor is food at grocery stores. Uh, shortages are happening. You need to be prepared. That's why you should be prepared uh, with preparewithchad.com. <laughs> Aptly named. My, my Patriot Supply is America's largest preparedness company. They've served millions of American families. They have over 45,000 four and five star reviews. This is a, it's a company you can rely on. I love them. And uh, during the coming tough times, you can count on them to be there. Go to preparewithchad.com. You'll be amazed at what you'll find. High quality products, affordably priced. Act now so your order will arrive quickly and discreetly. Uh, they're in stock right now, but they're selling fast because of what's happening. So don't let the homeless people steal the stuff out of your shipping container, okay? <laughs> Go to preparewithchad.com today. If you do, you'll thank yourself. If you don't, you'll kick yourself. And maybe let some of those homeless people in to keep you warm in those winter nights. Uh, pre- eat one of them. Preparewithchad.com. We'll be right back. Oh, my God. Uh, The things that are said over the break. Uh, (laughs) Virtue signaling pizza parlor in Seattle shames unvaccinated people. Um, Seattle. Another in town requires vaccinations to enter. I don't sit around thinking, you know what? I need me some Seattle pizza. No. no. <laughs> like I don't, I'm not getting the blah, blah to, to go eat pizza for crying out loud. In Seattle. I mean, you know how you get around that? Um, delivery. A delivery. And then I have to put up with you purple haired douchebags <laughs> yeah. that are rude to me. Um, and anyway. and, and uh, deal with uh, Antifa along the way. All right. I might have to walk stopping through Chaz your, or Chop. Yeah, stopping your car in an intersection. So, And then, of course, the police won't be there to save you. So I'm good. Delivery's good. Actually, you know what? I'm good not setting foot in Seattle. I think yeah. I'll just... So now we have, now we have dining tyranny. I just mm-hmm. keep adding to the tyrannies. Mm-hmm. Now, we have, now we have restaurant tyranny. <laughs> it's not just tyranny, though. It's, it is, I, in my opinion, it is the worst... Uh, uh, form of discrimination since the civil rights era. Oh, hundred percent. This is this is this is 
discrimination unheard of since the civil rights era. Yeah, and that's why what we need to do, and I've encouraged people to go back and study civil disobedience. Yes, yes. Yes. Demonstrated this, by Martin Luther King yes. Jr. in the civil rights movement. This is the new civil rights movement right yeah. here, right yeah. here and now. Saturday, I'm headed over to uh, Love Field, the airport here in Dallas. I'm going to be heading over with the uh, Southwest Freedom Flyers. We just had Tom Bogart on the show. He's the founder of that. I uh, could do a little rally from 10 to noon uh, there at the entrance at Love Field for these, um, these folks that are fighting the mandates, the employer uh, mandates. You know that Joe Biden said he didn't care what the court said. He was going to push on through with these mandates. I mean, this is called yep. tyranny, folks. Yep. This is, that's tyranny. Um, and you're going to F around and find out. Uh, Ex-elementary school principal charged with five felony counts of sexual misconduct with a minor. See, you just end that right there. Bam. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's a girl, though. 34-year-old Ashley Breedlove, Farmland, Indiana, on Tuesday. Uh, they charged her, they arrested her, charged her five counts of sexual misconduct with a minor. Um, God, it's always so weird yeah, to me when it's, it's weird a female. Too. Yeah. What are you thinking? Like, what are you thinking? Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Like, I, I knew that, I mean, you know, we had some pretty young teachers in high school, and you always wondered, like, you know, okay, they're 23. Right. You know, the boys are 18. Right. And it wasn't that big of a difference, right? <laughs> um, you said 34? This girl? Yeah. That's a pretty big spread. Yeah, I, I'm not justifying it by any no, stretch. No, no. Now, I did date my ugh. English teacher when I was single. I mean, as an adult. I dated uh, one, of my, one of the college, it wasn't my college English teacher, but a college professor. Yeah. I dated, I mean, we still keep in contact. I heard from her two days ago. Uh, she's a good friend. Wow. I mean, I mean, she's only five years older than me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, we didn't date when I was in high school. Right. I was... 32, 33 years old, 34, 5, I don't know. Well, you might have still been in high school. I was in my 30s, but you never know. <laughs> you're just uh, you're just a cowboy, it's fine. Mind, these girls, they never get older. <laughs> you get older, these girls stay the same. <laughs> Sorry, I was messing up that uh, that little quote. Uh, but uh, don't touch the kids, people. Speaking Please. of Matthew McConaughey, uh, he's coming out against the vaccine mandates for children. Well, he ain't going to survive if he uh, uh, ends up running as a lefty. Democrat, yeah. You so, can't. Um, you can't be. You can't be against sacrificing your children you for a greater good. Kids. Yeah, you have to sacrifice the kids. That is the Democrats' number one agenda these days. Oh, it's one hundred percent. If it's not in the womb, they yeah. will find a way. Like, well, our deal is that of abortions. So abortions have decreased over the years, right? More people are having their babies. Well, right. the left, that ain't that ain't making the left happy. Right. Right. So they got to go after them. They're like being yep. born, so we got to get them. Yep. You know, yep. like, oops, these suckers got out. These little gremlins. We got to go get them. <laughs> Somebody poured water on these bastards. <laughs> um, and um, let's speaking of that, I bet you there's some kind of indoctrination going on on TikTok, Chris. Let's see some. Oh, jeez. Oh, she's cute. Yesterday, I heard a coworker say, "I may not bother with the social justice content. The parent pushback just isn't worth it." But here's the thing: allyship abandoned the moment that it challenges others or receives pushback isn't allyship. And second, parents aren't always our adversaries. For every one parent that pushes back against social justice content or your pursuit for educational equity, there are several others that support you and are in your corner and your pursuit to achieve equity in education. And we're not in a right to work state, so we can't just be fired just like that for discussing social justice in the classroom. We live in a union state in California. So this individual oh. has no genuine fear of being fired on the spot for pursuing educational equity. They just don't want to be inconvenienced by talking about it. You're not putting yourself on the line. You're not an ally, and you're certainly not an accomplice. I think I'm going to have to look up what educational equity is. <laughs> like, I'm not. Like, they toss these terms around. Yes. Sound, I guess that's the woke intelligentsia yeah. of the world that's out there. And it's like, mm, you know, just stop pumping your bullshit in my kid's head how about that right i mean let's just go there how about that why don't you teach the curriculum why don't you build a syllabus based around the curriculum and the accomplished goals that you're trying to get to uh so that you can actually teach you can train you can test you can evaluate you can promote and then you'll have another batch come in next year and you do your fucking job <laughs> right just do your fucking job <laughs> It's not about you to go out there and change the world for social justice. <laughs> teach them to read, 
teach them to write, teach them to add, subtract, multiply, divide, teach them history, teach them civics, teach them geography, geometry, teach them, you know, how to write a check, balance a checkbook, teach them some financial responsibility, whatever your role may be. But you don't have to talk about their no-no square. And you don't have to talk about who's carrying a vagina and who's carrying a penis and how that affects the cultural landscape of our paradigm and our Weltanschwung and our Schadenfreude. I got news for this girl, too. I don't know if she saw what happened in Virginia, but uh, she is not above all of that happening in California because I just read a story earlier this week that the California Department of Education had plans to, um, you're talking about teach them math, teach them all these things. They were going to teach them those things in the curriculum, but they were going to put into it all of these you know, racial justice uh, yeah. issues in their examples of the problem, right? So you're solving a math problem about racial justice. And guess what? There was such a backlash from all of the experts and the educators who were looking at this that they had to put that plan on the back burner yeah so she so this this little lady over here with the with the blue hair thinks that uh for every one parent there are several others who are with her no 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 sweetheart yeah no they're allies no they're no an ally no just teach them okay that's your job teach them see but see you don't know to teach them because you're empty-headed yourself yep you can't teach them you got nothing there you're like you're like going fishing in a swimming pool there's no fish to catch Nothing there. It's just empty <laughs> up here, you bubble head. The only thing in your head is your snot bubbles. I mean, that's all. Too much hair dye. It, it seeps into their brains, man. <laughs> and it's just this focus on, like, I don't need, like, at what point in time did the schools become these big indoctrination camps where the teacher feels responsible to do what is the parent's job? to make sure that this little mind and heart and conviction is shaped. Mm -hmm. And then we send them out there to be little rebels in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and they grow up to be little assholes. <laughs> and they work at pizza joints that won't let you come in unless you got a vaccination <laughs> card, you know? Yeah. Just stop with this crap. And yeah, I said, F we'll be right back. <laughs> there it is again. My shirt here on the chest says CRTV, doesn't it? You know what? Beck doesn't sell me that couch. <laughs> it is review? now. The review. Yeah, is that Horowitz? Daniel Horowitz, deal? yeah. That's Horowitz's deal. You know, Daniel's never had me on his show, putz. <sighs> he hasn't had me on either. I hadn't thought about it, actually. He's Except been on my now. show, though. Yeah, he's been on my show, too. What a bastard. Yeah, a little bastard. No, I don't want to go on a show. Um, I, want him to, I want him to want me. That's the deal. Daniel, Daniel Horowitz. I just want to be asked. I, like I didn't Horowitz. say I wanted He's to do it. He's a good dude. Uh, leave a five-star rating where podcasts are offered. And, of course, a good review. That's what we'll take. RJP13180. Love it. Love this show. It's entertaining and informative. He talks about what the media refuses to talk about. Chad and the rest of his crew are logical as well. Keep doing what you're doing. Love, Chris. To you. Uh, he <laughs> deaf cracks me up hearing his laughs. Reminds me of me and my friends, LOL, Prather2022. Thank you very much for that review. Uh, Prather2022.com is where you could go to donate. We need uh, help. We definitely do. Uh, the momentum is strong. Uh, people are blown away with my articulateness. <laughs> it's, it's not a word, folks. It's not a word. Um, anyway, go over there and check it out. Prather, and come to an event soon. Watchchat.com is where all the fun stuff is. And uh, don't forget American Beauty by Sarah. Thank you for being on the show. I Thank love you. you. Let's go do your you. show. Yeah, let's do All it. All right. Y'all have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Love you. God bless you. Remember, November 22nd, big show. Bye.